However, whatever spin we put on this, the same problem exists over all generations, and that is, where do you actually meet Where's, someone? How, do you, how do you meet someone? There are two things that we need to remember here. One is location, and the other is proactivity. Location means putting yourself in environments where other people are. There's no perfect location for meeting somebody. What, what you have to do is put yourself in busy locations. But you're not going to meet them sitting at home. Not, you're not going to meet them the at home. I always say do a more sociable version of something you already do. So if you do your shopping online, yes. go do it in a busy supermarket. Mm. If you eat your lunch at your desk, go eat it in the crowded square near your office. If you so walk say, your dog, don't do yeah. it alone. 100%. So say you're in, you say, I'm not going to eat my lunch at my desk. I'm yep. going to go out and I'm going to go to that cafe and then you see a hot guy. Yeah. Do you okay, make get the this move? Route. Do you so, go over and so say hi? women have to start making the move. Do but there is, a, there is an old-fashioned way to make the move. Women say to me, Matt, I'm old-fashioned, I don't make the move. I say, then you don't know what old-fashioned is. Because mm. a woman 100 years ago would walk past a guy, drop her handkerchief, <laughs> and she'd keep walking. The guy would see it, he'd say, this is an extraordinary opportunity to be a man. He'd pick it up, he'd walk it over, and he'd say, Madam, you dropped this. So do we walk past someone in the cafe and then drop our teaspoon? You, here's what? what you do. Here's a great way of dropping the handkerchief in 2017. You ask a favour. So if you said to a guy, um, I'm so sorry, I could really use your help with something, which, by the way, is a really sexy line to use to start <laughs> with. I could really use your help with something. Yeah. Could you hold my jacket for me for two seconds while I give these coffees to my friends? I've run out of hands. I'm liking that. Right? He now feels chivalrous. And his like, protective instinct right, comes I out. I do something for yeah. him. See this? Yeah. So now you go give your drinks to your friends, you come back and you say you're a gentleman. Thank you so much. How's your day anyway? He now feels like he was the one who did something. Mm -hmm. He doesn't feel like you started it. Yes, yes. He feels like he did something for you. So that is an extraordinarily powerful way for any woman to make a move today without seeming like she's making the move. Okay, okay. so you've got to be proactive. Get out there, don't be too shy. Even if you are shy, you have to kind of try and get over that. Shyness right, is not an excuse. You, yeah. I want to ask you about rejection, because the other thing I hear a lot from my younger colleagues is they meet somebody online, they're chatting, it's great, you know, they're, they're attracted to each other, they have two or three dates, and then he just disappears off the face of the earth. Yeah. He stops texting, he's, he's like disappeared. Yeah. How do you cope with that kind of rejection? When I mean, it more than once. I did a video on this recently on my site, which for anyone who's listening is howtogettheguy.com. Mm. We did a video on the, the, the dangerous part is not someone disappearing. Someone disappearing will save you a lot of time. So you just go, he wasn't into you, the let day him go. You, closure is overrated. Stop looking for closure. Start right. moving forward and getting out there and meeting new people. The most dangerous guy is not the guy who disappears. It's the guy who disappears and reappears and disappears and reappears. Okay. Yeah. Because that guy will waste your life. Absolutely right. The right. guy who, I call him the MPI guy, the minimum possible investment guy. Yes. He's the guy that hasn't spoke to you in four weeks and then sends you a text message that says thinking of you. Oh. Like, what do I do with that? Now, too many women get that text message and they get excited like, he's, you know, maybe he is thinking of me and they start now giving him investment. I always say, don't invest in a guy based on how much you like him. Invest in him based on how much he invests in you. And can I ask you, if you, how long should you date somebody if you don't think it's moving forward? Because the other thing I say to them, I go, why are you on date five with this guy? Mm -hmm. And he doesn't seem to be showing any kind of commitment. He's not ringing you during the week. You're doing the calling, you know, because should you just say, look, he's obviously not that into me and, and not call him? Look, firstly, in the beginning of dating, there's no shame in asking a guy what he wants. I could be on a date and say, you know, I I'm curious, are you someone who's like a relationship guy? Is that what you're looking for right now? Are you looking for something else? Now, a guy, f guys they find it very hard to lie. That. No, they don't, because you don't make it about you. Okay. Here's what you say. You say, is that what you're looking for right now? Now, he may say, why are you still single? And you say, you know, I'm loving being my, me and being by myself and doing my thing. If I meet someone extraordinary, that's great. But it'd have to be extraordinary for me to want a relationship. Do you know what I still believe? Don't give too much too early. I think too many people give all they've got far yep. too early. The guy gets what he wants, whatever. Why should he hang around? Do you think that's, that's true? My Do you view. think that's true? I think, well, I was once told you have to be a, a Rubik's Cube. When someone figures it out, they put it down. Mm. So there's always a part of you that you want to have a little bit of mystery about. And even in relationships, I deal with couples that have been together for 30 years and they think, oh, your stuff doesn't apply to me because I'm in a relationship. It's nonsense. Mm. Because in a relationship, there are two components, love and desire. Love is something you build over time. Desire is often something that's lost over time. But desire is in the space between two people. A wonderful woman, Esther Perel, wrote a book on this. L desire is the space between you. So even in a long-term relationship, you can't just become one. Mm. Because the moment you become one, you don't want each other anymore. 
yeah. you have to maintain yeah, enough space. Pockets, I hate that. Yeah. But I'm still trying to figure out a piece of you. Always let me be yeah. figuring yeah. out a piece of you. No, I agree. I, I've been with Ruth 21 years or so, and it's always seemed like a date. It's always oh, seemed isn't that beautiful. You know, uh, yeah, and that's the way I, I, I like it. I like that. Are you excitement dating whenever. single in a relationship? I get single status? and dating. I suppose. Single and yeah. dating, ladies. <laughs> so remember all those but tips. I'll tell you what I like about you, Matthew. I like your positivity, and it can be applied to anything, really, in life, right. whether you're looking for a job or, or whatever, you know, and I, I think you apply the same business rules to a relationship. Yeah. I, like your, I like your don't Thanks waste, very much. Don't waste time on people that don't yeah. deserve That's right. your time. Yeah. That's right. Thank, Thank you, Matthew. Thank you for having me.